start and the downswing is probably one of the most important, if not the most important aspect to master in golf. A lot of golfers can play with the taker we go on the inside, on the outside. You see this all the time on tour. But they always find a way to get into that slot, the slot on the downswing that maximizes the strike, the compression on the irons, the distance, the accuracy, and also that consistency. And comparing how we do this from the irons to the driver is ever so slightly different, and that is exactly what we're gonna be diving into in today's video. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Harry PJ, golf professional, transforming golfers worldwide down here at The Golf Project. And feel free to drop a comment down below the tips or drills video you would like me to cover in a future video. And in today's video, we're gonna be covering an aspect that came up on one of the comments that they were finding the irons very easy to sort of start this downswing, get that nice compression and see much straighter further golf shots. But when it came to the driver, they were struggling to find a feel, something that would work for them to try and get this consistency, find that slot for the driver on the downswing. So in order to get us into this slot on the downswing, especially with the driver, we want to be looking at three things. How the downswing should start, why the downswing should start in that specific way, and how to implement this into the driver swing. The driver compared to other clubs in the bag to do with the downswing has a slight different effect. And this is just for the simple reason that our aim is to hit up on the ball with driver to optimize the launch angle, see higher and straighter golf shots and more distance because of this. And with the irons, we're obviously trying to hit more down onto the golf, but we want to get that ball and turf interaction. If we were to do the opposite, and if we were to do the opposite with the driver and hit too far down the ball, we're probably going to end up skying the golf shots and vice versa. With the irons, if we end up hitting up on the golf ball, well, we're probably not even going to hit up on the golf ball. We're probably going to top the golf ball instead. So it's really important that we get these two aspects correct. So kicking things off with number one, a lot of golfers have the tendency, especially with the driver, it's almost exaggerated the higher up you go in the bag, but so especially with the driver, they'll get to the top of the swing and they'll always start from the upper body and always cause the arms to almost speed up and allow the lower body to slow down. And the problem with this is the arms get too quick, the shoulders rotate a little bit too much away from the golf ball. We get almost this downward motion cutting across the golf ball. And with irons, it's not really that big a deal. We're just gonna be getting steep onto the golf ball and getting almost too much compression, but that's okay with the irons. With the driver, it becomes very difficult to control. We almost get this really low spinny slice with the driver when it comes to doing this. So you want to be finding a very easy, consistent method that's going to allow you to start the downswing using the lower body. The lower body allows you to generate loads more room, allows the club to naturally fall into the designated slot that it needs to, to be able to get this club working in your favor, to be able to square up the face and see those much better golf shots. And this is so, so important, and you will be able to do this very much so on repeat when you understand this one concept. And this is something I speak about in quite a few of my golf videos and it is that the golf swing will always have a tendency to work in reaction. So a good example is, let's just take the driver for example, if we had the tendency of bringing the club way too far on the inside to start off that takeaway position and leave ourselves very rounded at the top of the swing like this here, well, I've physically got no room to be able to come back down on this plane. So we're more likely to cast over the top and react, almost go too far in an effect to cure this problem. So what's gonna happen is we'll go from too far on the inside and then we'll go too far on the outside. So I understand that I mentioned before that a lot of golfers can play with different takeaway positions on the outside and the inside and still find this slot, but these are very good amateur golfers or tour professionals and other professionals out playing as well that have found ways mechanisms in their swings to get these unorthodox golf swings, golf takeaway positions to work in their favor. For a lot of us out there, including myself, it's very difficult for us to get into this slot if we're completely out of position because our brain and our body will always fight against it. We'll always want to go the opposite way in the downswing to what we've done in the takeaway. So we've spoken about the inside takeaway, we'll always have the sort of tendency to go over the top in the downswing, but also if you have that tendency, for example, of going too far on the inside, on the outside, sorry, you'll probably notice that the club will want to go this way because it hasn't got more room to go back on the outside. So what do we do? We loop and go on the inside. They're the two tendencies, and that's why it's really important that we set ourselves ready in a solid takeaway position to the top of the backswing first in order for us to get that slot correct. It makes it so much easier for us golfers to do if we can implement this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk you through quickly two takeaway tips that I'm going to give you just to help you set the club in the right way to maximize 
the next step where we look into getting that slot into the downswing. If you think that your takeaway position and backswing is all nicely on plane enough to be able to move on to the next section, feel free to do that. It'll be somewhere down here. Just have a look at the section where we start the downswing phase. Having a look at this takeaway position then, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take just an eight iron or seven iron. You can take a seven iron if you want to, mid iron. I know a lot of golfers like to practice with that club. And all we're going to do, well, I don't want to be hitting this shot off the tee. Just going to move that out of the way for now. I'm going to take two alignment sticks. These two are two different lengths. We've got a really small one and a really big one. You can use two really big ones if you've got the alignment stick set for this as well. I'm just going to place one just directly behind the golf ball like this here. I'm also going to place one pretty much where my feet alignment would be, just ahead of where my toes would be when I come to setting up at the address position. And a very easy thing for me to do to be able to set the club in what we call the P1 position. Don't worry if you don't know this, this is just simply position one in the golf swing. So that's simply the start of the takeaway position. So as soon as we take the club back in the swing, all we're going to do here dead simply is as we set up to the golf ball ready to hit is that this alignment stick here should be almost underneath your hands from your eye line. So your hands should almost be covering that second alignment stick, the alignment stick closest to your feet. And that's going to give you a really good indication of where your hands, your hand path is moving because what you'll tend to notice again, with the golf swing working in reactions. If the club head itself is working on the inside, where are my hands going to do this? They're working away from the golf ball. So my hands are working outside of that alignment stick. So the hands are working outside of the path as the club head goes too far on the inside of the takeaway position where we want it to be. Ideally, what we would like to see is rather than getting a lot of manipulation going on in the wrists and the arms, we want to be starting off that golf swing from the body and especially using the shoulders. I like to feel like as I'm setting up to the golf ball, a really good movement for me here is allowing this lead arm just to push the club and the hands away like so, just up until a point just before the club itself reaches parallel to the ground. And what this is going to allow you to do, as you can see here, it almost looks a little bit too stable. Club face looks a little bit too short maybe, but it's not. The swing works on the natural arc. So it's really important that we get this natural arc, this almost 45 degree angle that we want in the golf swing. The golf swing doesn't work vertical. It doesn't work lateral. It works on an arc. Just a little recap on this. I've got the alignment stick there, alignment stick here as well. This alignment stick next to the golf ball is representing where that club wants to travel. It doesn't want to travel on the outside of this. It doesn't want to travel on the inside of this. It wants to travel directly over this alignment stick almost for as long as possible up until this point here. And the same applies with the hands on the other alignment stick, the alignment stick closest to the feet. So from here, we're just setting up working more. It feels to me like it's working from the shoulders. And when I've got a few of my in-person clients doing this as well, they've also said the same thing. So if you're feeling it more, for example, in the hands to do this movement, you're probably getting a little bit too much wrist action taking place. So feel it more on the shoulders, especially that lead shoulder for right-handed golfers, the left shoulder. Just take that club head back like so. So second point I'm going to dive into just for the takeaway position is how important it is that we get this right arm set in position. So we've got this takeaway motion here. However, if my right arm is set in what we call a very internally rotated position, so where my forearm rotates too much inwards towards the body like so, I take hold of the golf club now and do this takeaway. I can do that no problem. But the problem with this is the next point. What do we do? And we get to here but we can't physically go any further up so what do we do we drag this right arm in like so the trail arm wants to go too far on the inside so it's really important that we get this part correct otherwise we're going to start noticing too much of a chicken wing too connected backswing position and then we'll probably get that reaction again and go too far over the top so from that position here where we've got this p1 position set up in the golf swing we just want to fold that right arm the trail arm the opposite way. So the opposite way being rather than internal, we're going external. So your elbow is pointing directly towards the body. You're just going to take the wrist and place it on the club like so. And now when we get the club set in this position here, dead simply now, all we need to think is that club head is going over the trail shoulder. So the right shoulder for right-handed golfers. How do we do this? Simply fold it upwards. I'm not doing anything else in my swing at all. I'm just folding upwards. Obviously we want to be allowing for a bit of rotation to get ourselves set into the top of the swing, 
but that's going to naturally happen as we get used to this and start to bring two hands onto the club we want to feel and allow this motion taking place here and if i take my lead hand on like so i'm in a great top of the backswing position to be able to get ourselves in this slot in the downswing so let's take a look at how we start the downswing so we understand now that it's really important that we get this lower body starting off that downswing to be able to get ourselves into that slot and in order for us to do this all we want to do a simple way of doing this is to create a sense of an awareness of where the pressure in our feet are moving to so what i'm going to get you to do is i'm going to take the club away for now and you can do this at home so if you're watching this on tv stand up for me and do this with me whilst doing this watch this and just start copying this and all i want you to do is take your hands and take them across your shoulders like so and i just want you to start making a few steps either side like this and now when you're doing this i want you to close your eyes and just feel the pressure going from lead foot to trail foot like this and now i want you to settle keeping your eyes closed setting up in that posture as if you were to the golf ball keeping your eyes closed i want you to start turning into the top of the swing here so in order for us to get this turn into the top of the swing you can see here i am spiraling upwards into the top of the swing i'm rotating but i'm also spiraling up into the top of the swing so again the golf swing will work in reactions so we're creating this sense of awareness of where the pressure is it's around 50 50 to start us off with and as we start to turn into the top of the swing it's probably feeling more like 80 to 20 percent more onto the trail side we're adding this pressure as we're rotating into the trail side if you're struggling to develop this feel i'd recommend trying this drill take your hands and place them either side of your legs like so and the lead hand is going to go down as the trail hand lifts upwards like this and so now we're creating this tilting motion and then all i want you to think now is that lead hip is going towards the trail heel and then we start to get this rotation into the swing the benefit of doing this first before you start to go into this if you're not used to doing this motion is the fact that what i just did then if i just turn i'm turning off the golf ball i'm turning away from the golf ball so to make sure we're staying nice and stable as we're applying this pressure into the trail side so going back to what we did before we've got the hands across the shoulders closing the eyes feeling that 50 50 percent either side for the weight distribution to start the swing and as we're turning and spiraling up into the top of the swing feeling that hip turn and spiraling upwards like so you'll start to feel a lot of pressure going into this trail foot the majority being 80 20 and probably a bit of pressure in the external side of that trail leg as well because the way to think of it is we're really adding a lot of pressure into that trail side the more pressure we add into the trail side it's like an elastic band when we push it further back it's going to increase that tension so we're going to be wanting to fire even more in the downswing so bringing in the downswing into place now we've got this turn up into the top of the backswing from feeling this spiral motion here and then we're feeling that trail hip going backwards almost towards the lead heel like so that helps us set into this position here then how do we trigger that downswing we want it to start from the lower body so we've got to get the lower body active as soon as it starts we're going to get the lower body active first so to do this I'm just simply going to rotate and twist, spiral up to the top of the swing like so, and then I'm simply just going to squat like so. So squatting like this here and just allowing everything just to switch off for a moment and squatting like so adds that pressure into the ground. It also switches on that lower body. What have you done to squat down? You've bent the knees, you've applied pressure into the ground. So what's that going to encourage you to do on the downswing now? As we've applied this pressure, simply we're going to be doing the opposite effects from there. So we're spiraling upwards, we're turning and rotating into the top of the swing. Then we're squatting to start that downswing. We're gonna do it in stages. Then we're gonna bring this into all in one movement in just a sec. We're pushing upwards. So we're twisting upwards and rotating through like so. And the feeling for me there is trying to apply the majority of the pressure onto the lead foot. Simply, well, we thought right hips a trail hip going towards the lead heel. We're going to think slightly differently on the downswing. We're just going to think the lead hip now, as we've got to here and we've squatted down like so, set into this position, we're going to think lead hip just twists away from the golf ball. So you can see that I'm going up, squatting, twist away from the golf ball. And that allows me to trigger that lower body first to get the club into the ideal slot and allow for more distance, more accuracy, and so forth. So simply, we're just rotating and twisting upwards, squatting, 
rotating and twisting upwards too. Once you've done quite a few practice swings doing this in steps, whether it's at home or at the driving range, you're going to be wanting to implement this into an all-in-one motion. So how we do this dead simply is we're just twisting upwards, feel the squat slowly and then twist upwards and push upwards. You'll feel the push upwards as you start to get this hip going away from the golf ball. And again, nice and slow, twisting upwards, squatting down, twisting upwards and rotating through. And then we can start to increase the speed doing this. There, down and up. Again, up, down, up, even quicker. Up down up and you can see there i was able to increase the speed very easily and implement this straight away because i've been doing it for quite some time i've been training and implementing this into my own swing for quite a few years so for you who's just starting out doing this don't be worrying if it takes you 10 15 20 swings 30 swings 50 swings to get to the point where you're comfortable starting doing this all in one motion and then increasing the speed from there take your time take the steps implement this into your practice and now we can start to bring in the golf club so i'm just starting off back with the eight iron here just as i start to get used to this movement we're going to start by going very slow work our way up and then we're going to be diving into the key difference with the driver so make sure you stay tuned till the end for this so i'm setting up like so i'm just going to take a practice swing i'm just feeling this rotating and twisting up to the top feeling this squat and then rotating and twisting on the way through. So I'm just gonna start off with a very slow swing, back and forth, nice and easy. Twist up, squat, twist up. That felt to me like then I didn't squat enough. Okay, that's gone a little bit too far to the right. Let's give that another try. Let's exaggerate that again. Up, down, up. That felt much better. And you can see as I'm making those swings there, it looks very, very easy. You know, my arms just look like they're swinging naturally in the golf swing, and that's what should happen. The natural slot in the downswing should be obviously on this 45 degree angle, but to get that, we want to be allowing the arms as we get the club to the top in this great position that we mentioned before in the backswing, from there we can just allow the body to do its work that the arms and the club follow. So now I'm just going to start increasing that speed a little bit more into this up, down up like so if they start a little bit inconsistent don't worry that's just you getting used to this feel and allowing obviously the arms and hands just to free flow for a little bit allowing the body to do its work and allowing the arms just to follow that felt really good see so yeah, a little bit of a draw which is what i tend to play with out on the golf course anyway a little bit pulled to the left and i've not hit any other shots today so i'm quite stiff doing this so really make sure that you've given yourself at least a bit of a warm-up before you start bringing this into play and practicing so we've created that sense of awareness with the body we've got that takeaway working on point and the backswing on point now we've got the slot working in our favor but how do we implement this into the driver what is the key difference with the driver that makes this club a little bit more different when trying to bring this downswing motion into play to the rest of the clubs in the bag. And dead simply, like I mentioned before, trying to hit more up on the golf ball. So what do you think we need to be exaggerating a little bit more to get this move on the upward motion? Well, think about it this way. If I rotate and extend upwards like so, and then I squat down, I'm effectively lowering my height, aren't I? So if I just swing down from there, the likelihood is we're gonna get a little bit underneath the golf ball. So the key to driver, no isn't squatting less, pushing upwards and twisting upwards even more so. We still want this natural motion to take place on the downswing with the driver. So it's really important we get that slight little squat to switch on that lower body to take care of the downswing. We want to be making sure that once we've done that squat, we're pushing upwards and off from the ground, twisting and rotating upwards even more so. I'm just going to start off with a slow swing here, taking it easy. I'm not fully warmed up just yet. Obviously, only three shots in. Doing this motion, working on that sensation of twisting upwards and rotating, squatting a touch, twisting and rotating upwards even more so. So it's almost feeling like I'm pushing upwards off this lead leg here. So back and forth. Here we go. Let's have a look and see where that goes. Oh, it's drawing that quite nicely into the fairway. Yeah, I'll take that. First shot, giving this a try. So again, I'm feeling that motion. I'm just gonna go slightly quicker on the upward motion to see if I can launch this one a little bit higher and get more distance from this. That sounded good. Just needs to draw a bit. Pushed it ever so slightly out to the right. Well, quite a bit actually now because it's staying out there, but it certainly did launch higher so once you've started implementing this with the irons you can work your way to the driver increase that speed all in one motion 
And once you start getting used to that, you'll start to feel a huge difference in your golf swing. That effortless movement, getting the club into the slot, into the downswing, to help you generate more speed, improve the strike, improve the consistency, accuracy with the driver for the downswings. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, drop a like and share this to a friend. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about the downswing and how this fully works, the kinematic sequence, then make sure you click this video over here. And for those of you who would like to learn a little bit more with the driver and improve the sweet spot a little bit more, just give this video a watch over here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. We'll see you next time.